Welcome to Made for More, the women's retreat, hosted by Melanie Simon of Living Waters, September 12, 2020. God is restoring. This is part of it. You guys being here, we're all seeing this in our lives. God is willing to restore the body because every single one of us, we all have a purpose. We all have a part to play. He doesn't want anybody laying off to the side because he is doing a mighty work. He wants all of us to be there. Nobody left behind. Nobody left behind. Let us pray. Father, I just ask right now, Father, I know that you orchestrated all of this. This is your plan. Father, I ask that you would just equip each one of us, whether we speak or not. Just continue to flow through us, just like you showed me how the blood flows through the body. Just continue to flow through us. I thank you, Father, for making this all happen, for making this possible, for doing what you're doing. You're doing a new thing, Father. I praise you. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, Colleen. So, um, when Mel asked me if, uh, if that I was one of the people that came to mind, I was, I was honored and intimidated and doubtful. Um, I was like, I'm not qualified to do that. I don't, I've never done this. Um, but the deadline, so there, but there were like little, little like seeds planted inside me. I didn't realize it. I was like, they were like coincidences. Even, oh, I don't believe in them anymore. Um, like the deadline to give our answer was my birthday. And then on my birthday, I was at one of my jobs and I had the opportunity to pour into a sister in Christ and she couldn't make it today. Um, but I invited her ultimately and it was, I was like, oh, yes. And we were both kind of like crying and it, the whole thing it was just, it was really beautiful. And on like my three and a half minute drive home, I was like, oh, I'm going to get home and I'm going to text Mel, yes. And then on that same three and a half minute drive home, I just kept hearing fear, fear, like stamped, like a stamped out, like giving the answer. Because I started like thinking about it then in that moment after I decided in my mind, yes, um, there was fear. And so I was like, well, I'm still going to be, I hear that. Okay, noted. Got it, God. Um, but I was also like, well, I'm going to, I want to like think on it, pray on it. What exactly does that mean? Um, but it was just like really, really um, persistent. And it was distinct. And each time I heard it, it was accompanied by an image of, of fear that I've known myself, that I've seen in other people, that someone has shared with me. Um, and then the biggest confirming heart punch <laughs> um, was in regard to a spiritual attack that I experienced myself that I'll share in a minute. But um, I'm all of that to say that I didn't feel like I was qualified, and I'm not in the flesh. Um, so I'm just a, I don't know, not an earthly, filthy sinner, just like everyone else. But Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, oh yeah, sorry. I'm just checking. <laughs> it's, it's, I kept, like told myself, or I like remembered the, something that I've, I've said a lot of times, but I heard ultimately the first time from somebody else that God doesn't call the qualified; He qualifies the called. Whether it's for something like this, or it's for a mission work, you know, throughout the world. Um, whether it's in your living room with two people or here with 20 or, you know, 2,000. Um, okay, so back about two years ago, my now husband Mitch was on the road hauling campers. Um, and he was, he was on the road and I was at work and he was going to stop home for one night. I was living with my parents. He was going to stop home for one night and sleep and then take off in the morning again to finish his delivery and then do another few trips or whatever. So. He didn't have any clean clothes. So I was like, well, no big deal. I have to pass through that area to get back to my parents' house. Anyway, I'll stop at your house and I can, I'll do a load of laundry for you. So I started it before I went to work and then after work I got off like midnight, two o'clock, somewhere in there. And um, I went to his house, I walked in his back door and I was walking toward the basement and I was like, I'm feeling a mild discomfort. And that was it, I didn't think anything of it. And I opened the door to the basement and I was like, ooh, I've got a really icky, heavy, black feeling. Um, and I started descending down the stairs and I was like, this does not feel nice. I do not like it. It's like being like afraid in the dark when you're outside in the woods by yourself and you're like, there's something here. And you're, but it's, it's not, you're just out in the woods, but that's what it feels like. There's like, something's there. And so I went and I was like, I'm gonna 
hurry. And I switched the laundry and I was carrying the load back up, up the stairs, and I got to the top and I opened it and I was, and I was, there began my terror, just terrorized inside my head. It was like a hallucination, except I guess it kind of was. Um, every awful, disgusting, demented thing I had ever seen in any horror movie ever was was all of a sudden in front of me, in my steps, in every in every place. I was like, <laughs> that was like I don't know what my face was actually doing, but I was trying to like blink it away, like don't look, don't look at it, look at avert, go up, you know. So I went up the stairs, and it was still happening, and until I didn't, excuse me, I couldn't turn on all the lights. Um, so I went upstairs, I got to his bedroom, and I turned on the lights, and they, it, it had paused. But this presence that something was coming for me was, was like weighing on me. It was like cinching, like a, like a lead straitjacket. And um, I was afraid to leave his room, because I was like, I have to go back out in the dark. And nothing's, nothing's getting me right now, I can't see anything right now. Um, so I called him, and I was like, there's something going on. It's really weird. I think I'm going crazy. I don't know what's going on. Just stay on the phone with me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, don't, I was just, I was in a panic. And so I finally was like, okay, I'm going to walk up to my car. Just don't hang up on me. Whatever, you don't, like, if you disconnect, call me back. And so I went up to my car, and I thought that it was, I, I went quick, and it was like a, a brief moment, 30 seconds, it took me to go to my car, and it was, and I didn't see anything. And so I was sitting there, and I was just, I didn't know what to say. I was speechless but talking probably mumbly things is about the speed I'm talking now and so I apologize for that. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so, um, and, it, and it started happening again, these things. And I, I don't know, some of them I could, I could tell you but whatever the, the awfulest thing you've ever seen, imagine that and that's what creeping out from between two houses, standing in the neighbor's yard, approaching from down the street. So I was like, I have to, I have to drive. I have to drive to my parents' house. Um, and I, I'm shaking, worse than I am now. And um, so I started driving down the road, and they live out, out in Boyd. And so I left Bloomer, and I got to, it was happening and happening and happening, and I was driving through Eagleton, and I was, I was bawling at that point. And I was just sobbing, I was like, I do, what is happening? Am I going crazy? Am I am I crazy? Like it's not real, but it's real. What like what I don't know what's going on. And um, so I turned on to Y going toward the Country Fest Rock Fest grounds. And I was probably a quarter mile down that road and it dawned on me, but not quite in a saturated decision making kind of way. This is a spirit. And, but that was, it was like a hint, like do something, do something about it. But I didn't because I'm like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> and so I just sat there tormented and sobbing into the phone and my husband, at, well, not yet, he wasn't. And Mitch was just like, I'm sorry, honey, I don't, I, you're okay, you're okay. <laughs> and, and I, so sobbing, whim, whimperingly whispered, in Jesus' name, stop. You're not welcome here. And I was, so I was like, <laughs> you know, ugly crying. And I, that was all I had in me. I couldn't, it, it wasn't a declaration. In the name of Jesus, get out. It wasn't like that. <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> you know, like, I'm a warrior because, of, I mean, I am. I've had that, like, spoken a couple times, but in that moment, I wasn't. But that didn't take away from the, the authority that I had to speak the name of Jesus. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's okay. I lost my place because I didn't want to edit at all. But that was, and, it, and it was, I missed the most important part, was that in an instant, in that instant, it melted away. And I was like, and then I cried more because it like happened here. And I just like, wh like, whispered and cried, thank you, the rest of the, you know, 15 minutes to my parents' house. And I just was beside myself because I was like, it's true. It's real. It's it's real. <laughs> the the spiritual realm is real, yeah. and our authority is real. Is real. Amen. Amen. And the 
the power of the words that we that come, leave our lips is real. Yeah. Whether that is speaking life or speaking death, yeah. that power is real. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's consequences to it. Yeah. And yeah. praise Jesus, there are consequences for the enemy. That's right. You're not welcome here. Yeah. Yeah. And but there are also consequences for the earth and our sphere of influence and our loved ones and the world as a whole because we're a body. That's right. Amen. So all of that to say that there's a lot of things that we can be afraid of right now. There's civil unrest. There's disease. There's oh, thanks, Mel. There's disease. Um, oh my gosh, you name it. But we so we can choose to walk in fear, and we can choose to let fear dictate the things that we do and say and where we invest our authority mm -hmm. and our, our power and our energy. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to spend my day worrying, saying, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do about this, I'm, well, nothing's going to happen because I don't know either way that me saying I don't know and me walking in the uncertainty and walking in fear doesn't actually change anything. But if I said, I don't know, that's a fact, and now I'm going to move on, and I'm going to take care of my family, and I'm going to pray for my loved ones, and I'm going to serve others, and I'm going to pray every day and ask God every day to show me what he's doing yes. and walk in what he's calling me to walk in, even if it doesn't look like anything I'm familiar with, yeah. Mm -hmm. to do it. But I have a choice. Each of us has a choice each day. Yeah. And I think that it becomes... I think walking in fear, or walking in worry, or whatever, you pick a, name, a label, um, becomes like an addiction. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, a, it's a lifestyle change to make it. Yeah. And it might be a conscious effort. It might start out as I have to, wow, oh my gosh, it's exhausting. Every single moment I have to choose. Yeah. Every single moment I have to choose between, <laughs> between fear and walking in God's will. Mm -hmm. and then it be, but it becomes less. It becomes every minute, and then it'll be every hour, once a week, once a month, and then it'll just be, it's what you're living. And then you still might get a hurdle. You might have something that knocks you down, and you might have to crawl back up, but you already know. You're like, this is my default, and I just have to, I've already have steps built to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's not like digging yourself out of a hole that you're ready to in. That's it. <laughs> Great job.